Hello, welcome back. The title here is called Order of Operations. This is part one. I am not exaggerating when I tell you that what we're going to learn in this lesson is really one of the most important things that you'll ever learn in math. It's called Order of Operations, and it's all about how to do the calculations in the correct order. That's why it's called Order of Operations. The reason why it's important is because we use it in math, we use it in algebra, we use it in geometry, we use it in all of science and engineering. It really is one of the core things that you will ever learn. So, order of operations means when we calculate, we have to do it in certain order. That's what it means to say order of operations. The order is very simple. Here I'm going to write it on the board, but I want you to keep in mind that we're not going to be dealing with exponents in this lesson. We're going to introduce exponents and talk about what to do with exponents in a later lesson. But for now, we're doing everything but exponents. So when you're doing operations and calculations, you do them in a certain order. The very first thing that you do Step number one, the first thing that you do is always what we just said in the last lesson. We do the parentheses. That's what this means, parentheses. So whatever is inside of parentheses, you always do it first. And that is why we did the last lessons on dealing with parentheses in math. Now, after you've conquered that, the very next thing that you do, setting aside exponents for now, is you do multiplication and you do division. All right, multiplication and division. And then the third thing you do and this is the end of our list that you do after you do the multiplication and division part, is you do addition and subtraction. So I'm gonna leave this on the board throughout this lesson because we'll, we will refer back to it. But it's a very simple list. Basically, the first thing you do is you always conquer parentheses first. Whatever is inside of those parentheses, that's what you do first. After you conquer that, the next thing you do is you do multiplication and division, right? And you also then after that do addition and subtraction. When you do the multiplication division, notice how these are in the same step. Multiplication and division are at the same level, right? Addition and subtraction are below that, but they are also at the same level. So let's see how to conquer this. Let's take a look at a problem. For instance, seven times three plus two. So we wanna calculate this. The first thing we do is we say, do we have any parentheses? No, we don't. So we don't actually have to deal with any parentheses. But you see, in, until you learn this, you don't really know what to do first. Do you take the seven times three and then add the two, or do you do the three plus two and then multiply by seven? And that is why we have to have these lists of, of the way in which you do it, because there's only one right answer. And the way that we do the answer is we look at the order of operations. No parentheses, okay. Do addition, uh, do multiplication and division first. Now we do have multiplication going on. So the, the addition here comes last. So we have to calculate this by saying seven times three, we do that first, 21. Now this addition is still going to happen, but it comes later, it comes last because it's in the last priority. All right, what is 21 plus two? That's the only thing left, 23. So the answer to this problem is 23. So what we did is we did the multiplication first, and then after we did that, we then completed the calculation by doing addition. Let's do it in the wrong order and see what happens. Instead of doing this first, let's do the addition first. Three plus two is five. So we get that five. Now we take the five and we multiply by seven. Seven times five is 35. 35 is definitely not the right answer. If you take these, uh, this and dump it into a calculator or a computer, you will not get 35, you will get 23. You go in the wrong order, you get a five here, five times seven, 35, that's wrong. So we have to do it in the correct order, otherwise the answer is wrong. All right, next problem. Now that we have the introduction out of the way, to conquer the problems is actually pretty fun and easy. Let's take a look at 12. We'll divide it by three and then we'll multiply by five. First step, the first thing we always try to do is parentheses, but we don't have any parentheses. Next, we go to multiplication and division. But here's the thing, we have a division here, and then we also have a multiplication. So both of these, division and multiplication, are on the same level, they're the same priority level. So what do you do? Do you do this first or do you do this first? Here's the thing, when you have multiplication and division on the same level, you just do it like reading a book, left to right. You always perform the same level calculations, these are at the same level, by going left to right. So because you just do it like a book, going left to right, we do the 12 divided by three first. 12 divided by three is four, but then we still have to multiply by five. Now the only thing left is four times five, which is 20, and this is the final answer. All right, 
what will happen if we go in the wrong order? So here we did left to right and we got an answer of 20. Let's say we do it in the wrong order. Let's do the three times five first. Three times five is 15. So this gives us a 15. 12 divided by 15. 12 divided by 15, I don't know what it is, but it's definitely not 20. So that would be the wrong thing to do. So we do the order of operation in order, but when we have the same level operation and the same, uh, kind of in the same, you know, in, in, at the same level here, and we have to choose what to do, we just do the same level operations as reading a book. And the same exact thing will happen with addition and subtraction. When we have adding and subtracting happening at the same level, we just read it like a book, left to right. All right, let's get some more practice. I promise you it will get easier as we do more of these. Next problem, five minus three, close parentheses, plus two. First thing we check, parentheses, very first thing. So we look inside the parentheses, we have to do that first. We have five minus three. There's only one thing happening in here, so we have to do the five minus three. But notice, you say, well, wait a minute, you already told me that the adding and subtracting comes last. Here you're trying to do it first. Well, I'm telling you that you have to do it in the order of operations. The order of operations says we must do parentheses first. Inside the parentheses, even though it's kind of a last priority thing, since it's inside a parentheses, it immediately kicks it up. You have to do it first. So we do follow this order, but you still must do what's inside of this first. And you must follow the order of operations inside of the parentheses. So we have to do the five minus three first to get a two. We still must then add this two. Two plus two, as you know, is four, and so four is the right answer. If you do this calculation in any other order, you will get the wrong answer. For instance, if you ignore the parentheses and say three plus two, five, five minus five is zero, that's wrong. So the answer is four. You have to do it in, in the order that we're doing it here. All right, really important. I cannot stress how important this is. So we're gonna get a lot of practice. Let's take a look at three plus five multiplied by three plus one. Now this looks weird. We have not one set of parentheses, but we have two parentheses. It doesn't tell us what to do if we have two parentheses, but it does say we must do parentheses first. So what this means is we must do this first and then this first, and whatever we get as the answers, lastly we multiply because multiplication comes after parentheses. Now I know we are adding inside of here, and so you think adding is last, but because it's inside of a parentheses, we must do them first. So what do we have? Three plus five is eight, and three plus one is four. We can do them kind of at the same time, because, or you could do one and then the other, but you still have to do the parentheses first, both of them. So here gives you an eight, here gives you a four. Now we're done with parentheses, we can drop the parentheses, eight times four, because they don't serve any purpose anymore. And now we have, of course, multiplication. That's the only thing left anyway. Eight times four is 32. So the answer is 32. If you do this in other order, you are not gonna get the same answer. Or if you do, it'll be a coincidence. Next problem. This one does not have any parentheses. 15 divided by three plus 16 divided by four. Now here we go. We first look at the order of operations. Do parentheses first, but we do not have any parentheses. What is the next level? We do multiplication and division. We have a division here and a division here and an addition here. We know that we're not going to add first because that comes later. Multiplying and dividing come first. So we see that we have this division here and then we have this division here. So we have to kind of do both of them first before we ever do any adding. What is 15 divided by 3? That's going to be what? 5, right? We still have the plus sign. What is 16 divided by 4? 16 divided by four is four because four times four is 16. You see, we did this one to get this, we did this one to get this. They're kind of at the same place. We do them both. And then finally at the end, we add and get a nine. If you do this in the wrong order, you will get the wrong answer. For instance, let's say we just read it left to right. 15 divided by three is five, so this is five. Five plus 16, if we just did this next, which is wrong, five plus 16, that's 21. And then 21 divided by four is not nine. So that would be the wrong answer. So we do the order of operations. We didn't have any parentheses. We see the multiplying and dividing comes first. So we do the divisions first, both of them separately. The addition comes last. And we get an answer of nine. All right. Next problem. Let's say we have 20 minus four times three. 
All right, first thing, as we have already said, is we do parentheses first, but we don't have any parentheses here at all. What comes next? Try to remember the list. Don't look at the list, think about it. It's just parentheses, multiply, divide comes next, then add, subtract. Very simple list. So we add, subtract, uh, I'm sorry, we multiply or divide next. We have this, this is gonna come last. Multiply always comes first. So four times three is 12, and then this minus with the 20 has to be done last. So we kind of go to the end of the problem and do this first. We never ever do subtraction first. Next, 20 minus 12, you can count on your fingers, you can go off to the side, is gonna give you an eight. And so the answer to that is eight. If you do it in the wrong order, you won't get the right answer. If you go left to right, 20 minus four is 16. 16 times three is definitely not eight. This is the right answer. So you have to do it in the right order. What about 84 divided by, parentheses, eight plus four plus one? How do we do that? Very first thing we check, parentheses always first. No matter what else happens, parentheses has to happen first. We have a set of parentheses, so it must happen first. Yes, what's inside of it is addition, but because it's in the parentheses, it has, hap has to happen first. Eight plus four. Eight plus four is what, 12? Now I can drop the parentheses after I've done the calculation. I still have this division symbol with the 84, and I still have this plus one. All I've done is this first. Now I must do this calculation, and I ask myself, what do I do? I have divide and I have add. Multiply, divide always happens before addition and subtraction. So the next thing I have to do, you ignore this, I must do the 84 divided by 12. So what I have to do is figure out what is 84 divided by 12. So I have to go through my multiplication tables. 12 times five, 12 times six, eventually you realize 12 times seven is 84, right? From your multiplication tables, 12 times seven is 84. So what I'm gonna get here is I'm going to get for the division here, which is gonna happen first, is gonna be a seven, and then this plus one is the very last thing. Whoops, not plus seven, seven plus the one. Finally, once that's the only thing left, of course it's gotta be eight. Eight is the final answer. As the problems get harder, or longer, I should say, we have to do a, a little better job just making sure that we're doing everything in the right order. Let's take a look at four times five plus three. The very first thing we do is always parentheses. Here's your parentheses, so we have to do it first. All right, the four times is gonna be done later, but I have to do this first. Five plus three is what, eight. All right, so now I have to do, what well, the only thing left is multiplication. Four times eight is 32. And this is the final answer, 32. All right, how many more do we have here? Only a couple more problems. They're a little bit longer, not too bad. Let's take a look at four times three, and this is gonna be plus four times three. What is the very first thing we do? First, we always do parentheses next. We always do a multiply, divide next. We always do addition, subtraction. Of course, whatever's inside the parentheses must be done first, no matter what. So I have two sets of parentheses here. This one, four times three is gonna give me 12. This one, four times three is also gonna give me 12. And this plus sign must then happen last. I have to do what's inside of here first. What's inside of here first? 12 plus 12, if you go over here and just do it, you get a four and a two, and so the answer is 24. And so the answer to this problem is 24. All right, now here is our last problem. Let's take a look at two plus six times five minus parentheses five times four. All right, so we have, again, what is our order? First we do parentheses, then we do multiply divide, then we do add subtract. We see we have one parentheses set here and another one here, so we have to do those first. So, uh, we can do them at the same time, but let's just do it maybe a little more break it out. We have to do this one first. Two plus six is eight. We can drop the parentheses after you calculate. Times five minus five times four. So we could have done this one in pair at the same time as this one, but let's just take it one step at a time. Do this one first. But now we have this stuff. All, all we did was leave the rest of the problem there. We must do this one first before anything else. So we have eight times five, that will do that later. And then here, five times four is 20. So now we have eight times five minus 20. What do we do first? We do 
uh, multiply, divide before add, subtract. Here we have multiply, here we have subtract. So we have to do the multiply first. Eight times five is 40. And then the last thing we do is the minus 20, which is 20. The answer is 20. So in this one, I did it the same way, but I'm just saying you could do this and do this at the same time, but I chose to do this one first, rewrite the problem, then do this one next, rewrite the problem, then go down from there. So again, incredibly important, very important. In fact, we have several lessons on this. You always do parentheses first, whatever's inside of those parentheses first. Then you do uh, multiply, divide, which are at the same level. They're, multiply is not higher than divide, they're at the same level. Then you do add, subtract, which are also at the same level. Practice every one of these problems. Follow me on to part two, we're gonna get a little more practice with order of operations. Again, it is really one of the most central things that we're gonna learn. So, take your time, make sure you understand what I'm doing. Follow me to part two, we'll continue building your skills.